So I, I also use the, uh, the six steps to the SLO implementation, but I'm also using backward design when I'm structuring my course. And uh, when we get to the six steps, again, I did say this is step number four, but we are identifying the overreaching SLOs, the goals of the course to be specific that when we're designing a rubric, we have that specifically in mind. And we're designing the unit, unit level objectives and assessment that measures whether the students have met that goal. We're designing and developing content and activities to support the student learning. We're using low stakes formative and high stakes summative assessments. And the unit level objectives and assessments that measure whether students have met these goals I'm talking this morning specifically on how to design and use a rubric. I'm gonna get very specific toward the end of this presentation. Um, and uh, way back in October, we had uh, Grace Estrada, PhD. She talked about implementing this fourth step in um, the SLO implementation. And she talked about authenticity, which is the validity of our assessments being bias reduced and comprehensive in course level. Validity, uh, the goals of this is the competency based on an overreaching course SLO and using your core because backward design, we're gonna pull out that core, we're gonna look at the whole uh, overreaching content for that course. And then we're going to analyze our SLO taxonomy verbiage to make sure it's we're using the, the newest verbiage um, we're going to make sure that our, um, our SLOs and our objectives are specific and measurable and observable through demonstration of CEs, competencies, whether the student, students have met that learning goal. Um, we're using both direct and indirect assessments to support student learning. Bias reduced. Uh, we want to make sure that we're clear and concise. A lot of the presenters this morning did a fantastic job in talking about how rubrics can help uh, make sure that we are being clear and concise and not biased uh, by using a well-designed rubric that's very explanatory. This really cuts through any kind of subjectiveness. It makes it very objective. We are identifying specific criteria. We're making sure that our rubric grid is a, um, in a design that determines the levels of mastery. So when we're designing a, a rubric, we're gonna be using a heading called criteria. And I'm gonna get definitely more specific as to what that means in, in a few minutes. And then our rating categories. So I know a lot, many people this morning they were like, oh, I didn't know I could use this and I didn't know I can say that. And so they gave, some of our presenters gave some really good examples of how can we name those little boxes when we're designing a rubric. Um, we can just say that that student exceeded or they advanced or that they performed at a high uh, competency or maybe they were just proficient. They've lost some points somewhere. It was good, it was meeting expectations. Um, you can say that they were, that box might be labeled fair or low, emerging, beginning, develop, uh, developing, or poor, missing, unsuccessful. So these are all different kinds of rating categories. I know that they talked about, um, Maybe it's just basic understanding that they met it was a little bit better. They were proficient or they were distinguished, which was just outstanding performance. Another few examples could be awareness, training, practice, competence, uh, does not meet expectations, meets expectations or exceeds expectations. So these are all ratings in those little boxes that you are going to be designing, which we're going to get to toward the end, I'm just going over um, some ideas right now. So developing a Canvas rubric uh, relates to student equity because when we're creating and using rubrics, it relates to uh, their equity because uh, we are being clear and we're being fair. It's objective. 
we are stating exactly what we're looking for. And did they meet that? Did they deliver in that one area? Students clearly know what their, our expectations are up front. Um, when I use rubrics for all the different um, uh, formative and summative assessments that I have in my classes, um, I ask the students specifically, look at the rubric. What do you, to, to do, to excel in this particular area, what do you need to include? What am I looking for? And so I'm training the students to go ahead and look at the rubric as they are writing a paper or before they write the paper. What, you know, when they are following directions, also go to the rubric. And then it helps them to be more successful. Um, it helps us to hone an instructor's skill in closing that loop, which is the, the uh, step six in the SLO implementation. And um, we're utilizing the learning objectives and we're making revisions. Let's say that more than 30% of your class in one particular area is just doing poorly. Well, what can I do as an instructor to help the students excel in that portion. What, where did I drop the ball? What can I do differently? And maybe I need to redesign that portion of the rubric to be more explicit for the students so that they can achieve a higher uh, level of mastery in that area. Uh, we want it to be comprehensive and course level. So we're gonna use, uh, when we're designing, um, our backward design, we're, we're taking the 18, if it's an 18 week for you or how many, if you're a quarter system, I think it's, what is it, 10 weeks, not 100% there, but if it's 18 weeks of full semester, you're designing what's happening in those 18 weeks, week by week. You're making sure that the core is being addressed and you've looked at the overall learning objectives um, and our outcomes, and then we are designing per week, uh, the formative and summative types of assessments that we're going to be using. Um, we want plenty of low stakes assessments. Um, some of the low stakes assessments that I use in my class are discussions, because this is um, one of the classes that I teach is a hybrid class. And um, we're utilizing Canvas. And even when it's not a hybrid class, I still utilize Canvas. And a lot of my assignments, instead of being on paper and we're pushing papers around, the assignments are in Canvas and they participate that way. And uh, a discussion where if they're looking at, they're watching several videos presented uh, or peer reviewed uh, videos, informational, and I would give specific instructions on what the point of is of watching that video. Maybe they're comparing and cost contrasting um, information coming from that video as well as their textbook. And so in a paragraph or two, they're going to compare and contrast or they're going to react in some measurable way, but it's a way for them to critically be thinking about what did I present in lecture? What did they read in the textbook and what's going on in the community or within their environment that they are gonna be participating when they're out of school. So it's it, these discussions, um, as long as they're following how I would like them in my rubric, I'm gonna design, what am I looking for in their response? So I'm gonna direct them, they're gonna watch the video and now I'm gonna give them a writing prompt. What do they need to address in that discussion? And um, so they're earning points, they're continuing their learning, and that's an example of a low stakes assessment tool. But this, this, I would have a specific rubric to, to go with that. Um, I would be giving them specific and de detailed feedback through the rubric, or um, I'm gonna show you later how to make comments in your rubric. And um, so it's giving them an opportunity to check for their understanding. Are they understanding this concept? Can they move forward? Or do they need to get back, check in with me, or just read the chapter or do the assignment? It just helps them to understand if they're on track or not. Uh, then summative, of course, is our high stakes assessments, the end of course, or maybe midterm types of papers or exams. Okay, let's see. I'm sorry, 
We are going this way. So utilizing Canvas as an assessment rubrics allows for direct evidence and detailed and careful recording of results of SLOs and learning objectives of the course content and design, following the backward design, a summative assessment essay paper, which is a high stakes type of project, an essay or exam that helps determine if a student has met a learning goal in my courses, I'm going to kind of focus on a, this high stakes uh, essay paper and we'll break it down on how I utilize the rubric and, and constructed it. A summative assessment essay is closely tied to the course level SLO and learning objectives and outcomes as they must align to the objectives to be valid measures of student learning. Um, I teach in at Fresno City College in the dental hygiene program and our Dental hygiene course content is pat patterned after a four-year university's um, curriculum. It's very rigorous, very detailed, it's cumulative, and they have to pass an eight-hour written exam, national board exam, and clinical exams. And uh, so we are competency-based as well, and it's just cumulative step stepping stones moving up the stairs. And... Um, so the courses that I teach, utilizing the rubrics is um, very pivotal and very helpful for student learning. Um, here is an example, building a, a, a Canvas assessment rubric. It allows for direct evidence of detailed and careful recording of results of SLOs, of student learning outcomes, uh, learning objectives of the course content and design. So here is just an example of what a rubric would look like. You have um, the title of the rubric. Um, I have the section number three because there's five sections of assignments in this one class, a guest speaker lecture report. So you're gonna name your rubric. Um, then the, in the rubric itself, you're gonna have what's called criteria and then the rating system. And um, just to give you a little heads up, um, this is just an example, but a lot of times in this content area under criteria, you can have more specifics. And in my other rubrics, I'm going to show you, you'll, you'll see that I have more descriptions in that, in that area. Some rubrics that you've, you've seen, it's like maybe rated on zero to five points. And um, that's certainly appropriate for whatever assignment you know, you're, it's up, use it, there's, okay, so you're personalizing this rubric for you and your class. <clears throat> there's a myriad of different things that you can do. Um, you can just do one, you know, number, a description of like excellent or proficient or developing, or if you're doing points, it can be a range. In other words, it to be superior rated here, you would be getting 65 to 70, 70 points. Here you have 59 to 65 would be proficient, emerging 53 to 59 and poor zero to 53. So when you're grading a particular project, when you click into the rubric, um, you're gonna be giving them a certain amount of points based on did they uh, reach your, did they satisfy everything to be a superior rating that you put in this description. Now, building a, a, your own Canvas assignment, what I recommend that when you, you're gonna go into your Canvas shell, you're gonna click on your assignments and you're gonna add a new assignment and then you're gonna be building it. And inside the Canvas assignment, in the rich text content box, this is where you're gonna design the instructions for the essay paper. Uh, you're utilizing your SLOs and the objectives. So um, this is an example of I'm in the assignment. This is a compare and contrast essay the, and the instructions. This is the name, the 1999 periodontitis classifications versus 2017 classifications for staging and grading uh, paper and quiz. And um, so in the rich text content, you know, you before you can develop it in there, but my experience is like, you know, if you lose your internet, 
everything you put into that rich text content box, it's gone. And because if you can save along the way, but if you lose your internet, where's your backup? So I always recommend start in a Word document, develop your content, everything that you want to say. So you, no matter what happens online, if you lose it, there's a myriad of things that can happen that can sabotage your work when you're in that rich tech uh, um, text content box and when you're developing a rubric. So always start in a, in a Word document. So basically you're copying and pasting, pasting into your rich text content box. And um, that was just an example of making sure develop it in a Word document, paste it into your rich text content in the assignment. You're gonna build your Canvas rubric next. You're gonna click on rubrics in your Canvas shell to use this feature. And you're gonna attach the rubric to that assignment. So design your rubric, rubric alongside of designing the assignment by starting the Word doc first, remember. So many things can have it happen and designing a rubric is super time consuming, but you're, you're putting in the work first and it, the payoff is after because it makes grading a, well, it's time consuming, right? We all know that, but I think that once you have developed the assignment online and your rubric, the grading is just amazing. It's, it's really efficient. But you don't want to put in all this time and something happens and it just evaporates. So you have three or four hours of work involved down to now you have to start over all over again. So Word doc first. Then you construct or build your rubric inside the Canvas rubrics piece by piece. And it takes, again, this is a long time. So you want to, as you're in the rubric, make sure you don't forget to save as you go. That's really, really helpful. Um, you're gonna start when you get the little, uh, so for example, here's just a real basic one. Here's your criteria. And on this one, I have, I'm looking at the student's organization and structure. And then I'm looking at, content. What did they say? This is the paper setup. And this is actually what did they say? And this is just a real basic example for here. Proficient to superior would be 42 to 50 points. Listing all the criteria that you're going to put in here, everything that you were looking for to be superior or proficient to get 50 points. What did they need to include? Um, APA format, you know, page numbers, one inch margins, uh, what was the font size, the, the, the font kind, is it Times New Roman, is it Calibri? All of this you're gonna spell out in this perfect paper is gonna cons consist of all of these elements. Emerging to unsuccessful, you know, what did they leave out of those, those elements? You know, maybe they, uh, they didn't have one inch margins. Let's say they had, one and a half inch margins because they didn't, you know, or here they had, let's say a thousand word count minimum. And here they were emerging because they were only 800 word count. So you would be putting that, you know, this is why they lost points. Um, here, uh, you're going to be listing the criteria of the parameters of what content they were supposed to include to get full points. And then here, what was left, left out that's a deal breaker for you? If they left out this concept, then, you know, of course they're losing points. But so now you're ready to grade. You're, you're constructing this rubric in rubrics. There's like a little heading to the left when you get into your Canvas shell. You can click it. You're going to uh, at, click on the plus sign. That means a new rubric. And then you get this blank shell that looks kind of like this and at the it'll say add a rubric yes or excuse me add a criteria so you want to add a criteria and each each one of these is a criteria this box is this is the first one so in your your uh your word document you want to kind of uh, construct a grid for yourself you're going to have like a title this right here would be a title then you'd have 
like one, two, three, four, four across of, of uh, um, columns. And then how many rows? I mean, I only have two here, but you know, sometimes there can be 10 if it's just a huge project. So each criteria, you're gonna just keep adding, describe it, and then you're gonna be building your, um, your designations for, you know, what are you gonna call it? You're gonna call it basic, proficient, and distinguished? You, you can, it's up to you. Okay. You're gonna, um, inside, your, uh, inside the Canvas shell, when you click on ass assessment or assignments, you're gonna scroll down to find what you want, and then you click to select open. Okay, so this is just a little uh, snip of I'm in Canvas, and on that left-hand margin, you know, you can personalize, if you go to settings and then navigate, you can personalize what shows on the students and your, uh, in your shell. Like right now I have my home, my announcements, modules, because I, I have, you know, I go by the 18 weeks, what happens in week one, what happens in week two, et cetera. That's part of the backward design, designing all 18 weeks um, you can call them modules, or I call them weeks and modules, so it's, there's no confusion. And so here I'm asking you to click on assignments, and um, you're going to find what assignment you're looking for. I clicked on, um, so when you go in assignments, you're going to find discussions and examinations, whatever you, you put, and you want to organize your assignments by categories. Um, uh, for example, I have this category right here, I've called papers. Okay, there's two different papers for this class. Um, it's, you know, I'd have a category of examinations, discussions, participation, all the different kinds of categories that you wanna group together. So when you submit your grades at the end of the semester, they ask you to have everything organized by category. And you can do that in Canvas. But I am going to double click on my compare and contrast paper. That's what we just talked about. You just design the instructions for that paper. You added a rubric and attached it to this compare and contrast paper. And so now, uh, how do we get to how do we use it? Well, you remember we just double clicked on the paper. And then we're going to in at the top left of that area, you're going to see related items and you want to get into, sometimes you, you, you can't find it. Well, where is it? You see the three dots. Some people call that hamburgers. I don't, I, maybe because they're round or looking at the top view of a burger, I don't know. But these three dots, when you cl click on that, it expands it and what you'll see are the different choices. And usually speed grader will come up. So you click on speed grader. And then what happens is after you click on speed grader, then you see a list of your student names. And when you click this arrow right there, you'll drop down to uh, whatever student has uploaded their assignment, you'll have a little orange dot. That means that the assignment was submitted by the student. You can click, you know, scroll down, find the student, click on it. And um, now it comes up, uh, you'll have the student's name, you can see the word count, which is like when you have a minimum word count, like um, for example, the last paper that's gonna be coming in has a thousand word minimum. And so what's nice is inside this uh, area, you, it'll give you the word count. And um, okay, so when you attach a rubric, it comes up right there. And in this little square thing, it says view rubric and you're gonna click it. And after you click it, you're going to see what you just constructed in real time, the criteria, uh, like for this particular one, the purpose and supporting details. So uh, for each category, remember I said you can have uh, just excellent or proficient, developing, poor, whatever you're going to name your categories. And did, was it worth points? Um, how are you going to, is it, was it complete, incomplete, or missing? 
you are going to design how are you grading it, but the content of to get 50 points, these are all the criteria, everything that I wanted them to include. Um, if it's not, if, if they fall short, then either going to be getting 25, maybe between this range, 13 to 25 points. And then, I, you know, they're missing something in particular. So you simply click the, the category and it's going to either highlight green, means they got full points, orange or red, or if they didn't turn anything in, maybe it's just zero points. So what the point is, that once you click on these categories, this box here, you can, because if you click here, it's going to put a 50 here. But let's say there was just something missing. They just, they didn't quite get the 50, but it was still really good. Let's say they got 46 points. So you would type in 46 points in this little box here. And then the box under it is the comment box. And gosh, they were so close to 50. What happened? What did they miss? Did they leave something out that kind of was a deal breaker for they didn't get the 50 points because why? You literally type in that box, that comment box. The student, when they see how they did, they see exactly how they did because they read your comment. Like, oh, okay. I left, I didn't do this correctly. And so now I understand they're not picking on me. They're, you know, by I didn't get 50, but I didn't do this. That is keeping it fair. And they understand where they're coming from and what they need to do differently next time so that they can get that 50 or whatever. So here's an example of just a snip of here's a paper. Um, what's nice when you're grading in Canvas and they've uploaded the paper that you have a toolbar at the top and you can um, you can uh, you know line through something that's erroneous or you can put a box around it and when you put a box around it you can type in your notes about it like okay this for example this was the wrong title it should have said compared contrast um, this person here put the wrong course number it should be dh1 they put dh7 but it should say dh1c on the front of their paper so i was able to line through it and then immediately there's a little box so i could type in what happened okay this is dh1d not dh7 or whatever that was and so in the rubric you notice here i clicked in this middle they lost some points see how it's orange and in that little box, I was able to copy the notes that I put as I was grading the paper, I put in some notes. And then in that comment box, I copied and pasted each thing that I, you know, that I corrected in the body of the paper into the comment box. And so now, um, you know, if they're not bothering to go into the paper where they see everything that I did to correct their paper, made I made comments. And you know, you can make comments like, wow, that's really great. I didn't know that or whatever. So when you're grading the paper, you know, it's not just to, to ding them to find what was wrong. You can box a comment that they made that was just outstanding. And, and like the critical thinking was like totally out, you know, just amazing. You can make positive comments too. And in the comment box, you know, if they didn't miss anything and they got full points in that comment box, let's reward them by making some nice comment to reflect that, yeah, I'm acknowledging that that was really great. So the comment box goes either way. You know, you can explain why they missed points, but you could also explain how, how great are they. Um, okay, now when you have, when you're constructing your rubric and you have that box, each box you're gonna, it's, let's say it's a hundred points. Uh, let's say the paper's worth a hundred points. Each of these criteria is worth so many points. Let's say this was 25 points and the next one is 25. So the bottom should equal 100 points. And that's how you get your range. Um, and I think I, I have one like down here, this right here was worth 25 points and they got 20 out of the 25 points. So um, each one, remember when that little, you clicked on that box and you typed in the comment, it shows up at the very end when you save, it gives, let's say you click all your boxes as you're grading that rubric, 
then at the bottom, it'll say how many points they earned. So this, this student got 83 points out of 100. And in each criteria, they can read your comments of what happened, how did they miss points? Here, um, they, met, they got 20 out of 25. And if you read the comments, they will be able to see what happened, why they missed five points in that category. Um, here is a simple one. Uh, exceeds or meets the standard or you can get, you know, well, there was a range, uh, the quiz was completed. If, if they didn't complete, let's say something happened, um, maybe they were late. So maybe they, I gave them, you know, they did a great job, but they were late. So they got four points. So instead of uh, saying, you know, clicking this and it's it's green and they give them five points, I would change it myself. I'd say four. And in that comment box, I would say, you know, one week late or one day late, whatever the criteria was. And so they got four points. This one, if they did not turn it in, they, obviously it's like no points. So you hear it's red if it was real poor. Um, this one here, uh, they did well, but the reference page was not included. Uh, Okay, so they got three points here and um, they were missing a mandatory, they were supposed to compare and contrast, but they didn't use one of the articles that they were supposed to use to, in the compare and contrast. So in, in this, or, um, or, oh, okay. So on this one, they didn't stay in the reference page. They, they missed a listing a reference. So I guess this particular case, they did use it. They just didn't cite it in the reference page. So they, they missed a couple points. But at least I'm explaining why in, that, in the comment box. Here is an example of, uh, let's see. I have stuff up here that's kind of concealing what I'm looking at. Maybe I can move it here. No. Oh. Okay, so this person did really well. They did a, got a 93. They missed a few things, but you can see down here in the comments that when you make a comment here and in the body of the paper, you're writing you know, your response. You can copy and paste that into your comments. This is just an example showing you know, the comments of why points were missed. This one, they got 20 out of 20. Um, let me see if I move this around. This one was 25, 21 out of 25. So when you're designing your rubric, you're going to give each criteria is going to be worth a total amount of points. And it should equal how much, you know, each criteria. So 25, 25. Uh, this one had a whole, whole bunch. So I think this is only part of the rubric. But each criteria will add up to the total amount of points that that project is worth. So when you first design your rubric and you have a shell, you're going to automatically put the total amount of points that that project, that assignment is going to be, if it's worth 200 points, and how many criteria are you going to have, it's going to divide it up into that's, you know, equally, or you can, you can make those modifications on how many points each category criteria is worth. So creating and utilizing the rubric, so Canvas rubrics relates to student equity because it helps make grading fair and clear for them. Um, you have to kind of, you know, students nowadays, I'm finding that they just have a harder time reading textbooks and just reading the instructions. And so we really need to actually teach that. Um, and if we instruct them to look at the rubric, they read the instructions of the paper, go to the rubric. And what am I looking for when you're writing this assignment? Um, students clearly know what the expectations are up front and why they received a particular grade. Um, and I think that uh, Dr. Howell was talking about that one student that was argumentative about that final grade. If you had, uh, if you were in Canvas and you're utilizing this particular rubric, for example, and that pay, that student is like, oh, you know, I should have got an A on that. Well, let's, let's pull up your paper. Let's pull up the rubric and let's talk about what my findings were with your paper and um, why I took points off. And um, 
you know, maybe they didn't take a time to read your, your comments, which it happens. And then you can direct them. Okay, so this is this is what happened. There was a thousand word minimum. And, and then in word count, where you met the criteria of word count, if they left, if they were at 800, how can they deny? They did not have a thousand word minimum. So next time, you know, make sure you go to the rubric, look, read the instructions because it was in the instructions. It was also in the rubric. And it helps keep it very, it levels the playing field. You met that requirement, that criteria, or you didn't. And what can you do better for next time? Um, if let's say you forgot as an instructor to put a word count, let's say, you, you know, in the instructions, it doesn't say anything about a minimum word count. Um, and the, the, your rubric in, doesn't state a minimum word count. Um, then that's something that, you know, we're going to learn during our evaluation. Well, why are the students so confused? Okay, I need to be more specific when I build my rubric. Um, so we're, we're honing our skills as instructors. Uh, we're utilizing the SLOs. We're utilizing the objectives from our core. Um, we're making revisions to help streamline the content and, and continue student learning and uh, honing instructor skills so that we're both moving forward uh, for the ultimate goal of student success. Um, utilizing the Canvas rubrics allows instructors um, to use direct evidence of detailed and careful recording of results of uh, utilizing the SLOs and learning objectives for course content and design. The backward design um, allows us a, a, the it's like the scaffolding of the house. You're building the scaffolding and framing of that house first. And then you are going into where best to put um, the summative assessments versus formative assessments and, and sprinkling in a good variety so that you are, uh, uh, you want to make sure that you are, everybody, you know, you remember when in the pedagogy of uh, learning styles, and oh, you were this, you're auditory or you're kinesthetic. Well, I think that the recent evidence was that most people utilize many learning styles. We, so when you're designing your assignments, you want to, to have sprinkling in all kinds of assignments that are um, appeal to everybody's variety of, you know, sometimes we excel at this. So we want to have a good uh, variety of assessments and, and for um, designing assignments that's catering to everybody's learning styles. And summative assessment essays that are closely tied to the SLOs and learning objectives um, must align uh, to be successful to the, to the course SLOs and the core objectives so that it's valid and it's measuring the student learning. Well, that is is all I have to say on that. But I have uh, I have a few minutes to answer any questions. So um, I know that you know there's a lot of little sprinkling of of details that there's just no time to cover. But this is you could reach out to me. I'm happy to help in any way I can. Um, when you're designing your rubrics and for your courses. If there's any questions, you can call me, text me, email me, and I'm, I'm certainly happy to give you information, um, how to traverse a problem or, or whatever, uh, whatever happens while you're developing your rubrics. Are there any questions? No questions, Mimi. I just wanted to tell you, you know, from a colleague standpoint, excellent job. Oh, <laughs> this is for it. Hi, Fred. Thank you. You're welcome. No, re really thorough uh, presentation. Uh, nice. Very nice. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I came in a bit late because I was trying to get into the mental health session, but the speaker was absent. Um, so I might have missed it. Um, I've been having a problem where I have rubrics, but sometimes Canvas doesn't link the rubric to the grade. So it automatically grades it once I've completed the rubric. And I went through a training once and it 
was some particular way to fix this issue, but I've forgotten it and I'm sorry. Okay, well, no, uh, that's happened. And being able to, so let me ask you a few questions and then maybe you can just you know tell me if this, this is what you did. Um, in order for a rubric to be linked to an assignment, you have to go, so when you're in Canvas, Mm -hmm. so, um, let me do you mind if I go back and let me go back to this particular slide that um, okay uh, let's see so you're when you go into rubrics or excuse me you went into canvas and you click on assignment and you clicked add assignment you end up going into that rich text box right you're developing everything and then right there and then you go to the little hamburger sign or those little three things and you click on it and sometimes you get an option add a rubric um if you can it, immediately in that assignment go to this little drop down those three dots you can add a rubric from there. And then you get into rubrics and then you click, you know, a new rubric, uh, you're going to name it. And, and then when you save, it will automatically attach it to your assignment. But let's say you made the assignment, it's already existing. You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go on a limb. Let me, let me just I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to go into my canvas. And Fred, if you're still there, maybe you could help me. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm still here. Okay. So I'm going to uh, end. Wait, stop share screen if I can. Where is that? Because I can. You can go in and there's a place where you can hide the students' names and it'll just. Well, give you no, I'm talking about. Let me just, I just want to get out of this PowerPoint and go into Canvas so in real time I can show. So I'm trying to figure out how to exit this oh, end show. Okay, let's see. Um, are you guys still there? Yeah, we're still here. Okay, so I'm going to exit this. Um, Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share screen. I'm going to go into Canvas. And um, let me see if I'm. Uh, okay. And. Okay. Now, can you all see this homepage? Yes. Okay. That's where it says, Welcome to DH1D. Okay. So we're actually in my in my home page for my for this one class for this semester and on the left here um let's see so let's go into assignments i have my uh, my assignments like discussions remember i was talking about you want to put all your 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 assignments together by a type and give it a heading discussions uh this is section two this is the observation these are the different categories and um let me go into okay okay so here we go i don't want any of those i'm going to let's say let's add an assignment so i'm going to click add an assignment and here we're going to give it a name and here's that rich text box yes let's go ahead and um let's say you what you want to do is in a word document you want to put all your instructions for that assignment you're going to have a you're going to have a name to the assignment and you're going to say everything you're going to want to say and paste it into this rich text box okay then I'm going to that, see the hamburger right here? Oh, that's not it. Okay, let's see. Sometimes it'll give you add a rubric right here. 
So test, test points, Let's say it's gonna be worth 100 points. Assignments, it's unlimited. Let's say it's gonna be due March 7th and it's available from, from now until Let's say April 1st. Okay, and I'm going to save. Okay, what did I see? Oh. So they're going to be able to upload that, and I'm going to save it. Okay, now I I titled my paper, I, as an example, I just wrote test. But after I saved, do you see where it says add a rubric? Right here. Mm -hmm. This is how you attach a rubric directly to an assignment. So you're gonna click a rubric and now you have the frame of the shell. So you would, put test, you know, I'm just saying test rubric is that's what we're kind of doing a little test here. I'm showing you. Here's your criteria. So let's say on this one, I'm going to call it um, grammar and I have a typo. So I'm going to correct that. That's criteria one. And I'm going to say that this description is, let's say it's uh, distinguished and distinguished. Oh no, wait a minute here. Okay, now, for here, see where it says, it's already gonna give you your designations, full marks, no marks. Um, if you wanna add, because you want three categories, I'm gonna have this paper worth, how many points do you want it worth? Anybody, jump in there. 50 points. 50, okay. Yeah. All right, so 50 points. So already it's, going to be 50 points in this category, but I don't want it to be full. So let's, so for full marks, do we want to call it, let's call it, we'll use one of these, um, the description from Dr. Salee. So D-I-S-T-I-N-G-Y-S. Okay, and I spelled it right. We're going to put distinguished and um, you can say, um, you're going to, you're gonna explain everything that you need to say, what made it distinguished. And I'm gonna click range and I'm gonna edit. So 50 to let's say um, 45 points was amazing. And then it goes to this one, you click the, the um, that little pencil. And so, Let's say 45 to, oh wait, I'm gonna get rid of this one because let's add one, one more. Okay, if it's not distinguished, it's proficient. And, you know, it was missing something. So here you have distinguished and 48 to 50 points. Proficient was 45 to 48 points. And then in a below 45, what do we want to call it? We can call it uh, um, basic. Okay, again, you can personalize this. And so um, if I wanted to add another criterion, I'm going to be subdividing that 50 points further, a new criteria. Let's say, the criteria was um, submission timeliness.
um, let's say uh, that's going to be worth. Let's say, did they uh, put? Did they submit on time? That's going to be worth ten points. But let's see here. I'm going to make this if the whole paper is worth see how it is putting those together to make it 60 let's say this is going to be 40 points because together i remember i only wanted it to be 50 points of an assignment so so 40 points so i would have to adjust this and it already did it for me because it, it adjusted and it's either let's say um full marks, which is, oh, you can copy and paste. Like if you want to maintain distinguished, you can copy distinguished, go to edit. Instead of full marks, you can say uh, distinguished. Uh, paper submitted, uh, submitted on time. And then let's say you're going, I'm going to do a range here. Uh, because you know you could say for every day late they they lose a point and this is we're going to say basic to um, uh, does not meet expectations so it can be um, let's say five to zero so it's so our total now we're in congruence with the total we only wanted a 50 point paper so this category was going to be worth 50, 40 points and this is to be distinguished proficient those are how many points this criterion here and let's say you can um in to give more information in this category you just type you click that little pencil and you can say um, paper was submitted, uh, let's say on, on time for each day late minus, minus, uh, one point. I, I'm just saying. You can say whatever you want to say in the criteria, or you can put it in the category here. So this criteria, you, you edit with this little pencil here to say what you want to say. This is submission timeliness. So paper was submitted on time for each day late minus one point. So up front, they're kind of seeing that, but it's not changing the points here. So that's a, So now you want to say, use this rubric for assignment grading. If you don't click that little arrow, it's not going to be tied together. So maybe that might be something you didn't click. And so that's why you can't use it. So don't forget, um, use this rubric and then you create the rubric. Wait, leaving the assignment total of 100 points, a result in 50 points. I don't know. So. Oh, let's change it. Okay. Okay. So here is my rubric. It's tied to um, all this instructions that I had put. It. Remember, you develop your whole page in a Word document and you copied and pasted it into the rich text. So you have all the instructions. You have the due date, the total amount of points, step-by-step uh, -step instructions. Everything's spelled out here. You have the name of it. Um, so that's listed here. And then you have uh, the rubric is attached. So let's now um, go to this assignment. And I'm going to go to, here's my assignment test. And um, I can't, well, I'm going to go to one example and then we're going to conclude. Um, let me go into my assignments. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to go to my home. I, here's a student who has uploaded an actual assignment. So I'm going to click on that. And um, it pulls, here's her paper. She, let me, okay, so see my little box, view rubric. 
Here are the criteria. It was content, grammar, format, paper submission timing. This is full marks and for, for per week that the paper is late is minus five points. Or here paper is two or more weeks late so they would lose a full 10 points. Or so that, so this is worth 10 points. Of the 100 points, 10 points was just turning it in on time. Um, for full credit, they had to have a word count of 1,000 words. If they, you know, word count was insufficient word count, maybe they lost some points. So I haven't graded this paper, but literally, you know, you can be highlighting, you click, you highlight, and let's say she got eight, eight, only eight points, I would click this box and I would type, why did she lose, you know, two points here? And then, you know, you click, maybe this is, you know, emerging, I'm gonna click this box and I'm gonna type in what happened there. And let's say, well, she turned it in on time, so she got a full full uh, 10 points. So this person is, is earning 94 points out of 100. Um, when I'm grading up in here, I could, let's say I didn't like, this. let's say she did something that I didn't, it was not appropriate. I can box this. And in this, I would say, oh, you know, it's the incorrect uh, title, or maybe it's the wrong paper for this is the wrong assignment for this paper, whatever the case may be. So here is to line out. Let's say, you know, I'm going to click on this. Um, whatever you make your comment here. And then if this is where she lost the points, then you just copy this, this note, you copy it. And you paste it right into your, your notes. And so when you hit save, um, I don't want to freak her out here. Let's see. I'll just delete it. Okay, we're going to hit save. And um, the 94 points should show. I don't know why it's not. So it's showing 94 submit. And Fred, it's doing, normally it comes right out right here. I may, because this is, I have no idea why this is not coming out, but it usually will show the 94. But down here, you can, you can explain to the student why they earn 94 points. Um, they can read the comments because they'll have a comment box. And, um, okay, I'm gonna go back into the rubric. I'm gonna um, put zero, so she's not, seeing this that that's what I created because I have not read this paper yet. So I'm going to say that right now it's just nothing because oh let's see. Nope. I don't know. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, well no worries. I when I save this she's you know it's still I'm going to grade it today and, and explain to her we used it as an example. So um, to get rid of this, this little trash can, yes, I want to delete that. And I'm going to delete it, yes. This I want to be deleted, yes, OK. OK, so um, let me stop my share. Did that help at all? That was off the cuff to show how to I, do I, it. My problem is I keep adding the rubric, and then I forget to check the little box of use while grading. Okay, so we discovered what happened. So, yeah. hey, Eureka, that was a Eureka moment. Um, you know, the, the devil's in those little details. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Thank you. So, this session has been concluded. Please reach out to me if you have any other questions and um, have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much.